Hey guys, I'm Liz and I'm going to be showing you how to collect your water quality samples for the Potomac Riverkeeper Network Citizen Science Water Quality Monitoring Program. Um, I'm just going to be referencing the program manual throughout this tutorial so you can feel free to follow along. Um, before you get started, you are going to need to make sure that you pick up your supplies from the Potomac Riverkeeper Georgetown office or the Sea Dog Lab at the National Harbor. And those supplies will include a small cooler to keep your samples cool during transport, one sealed um, sterile E. coli bottle per site, one opaque turbidity bottle per site, one armored glass thermometer, and your pH test strips. You'll also have a few pairs of gloves per site so that everybody in your team can stay safe while monitoring. You'll have a copy of this water quality monitoring manual. You'll have a field data sheet in order to record all of your findings and a chain of custody form for the lab bottles. You'll also have a page that has the site coordinates and some pictures of each of your site locations to make them easy to find. So before you head out, um, you're going to have labels for your bottles. So you're going to want to complete as much information as you can with the site name, the date, and the monitoring team. You're going to wait to put the time on that label until you actually take the sample. Um, as a reminder, all of your samples has, have to be taken between 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Wednesdays. Um, you can always, uh, it's always good to check your equipment as well before you head out into the field. So for your glass thermometer, it's good to just check to make sure that there are no bubbles in the column, the glass isn't broken, um, and you can clearly see the blue line in the middle. For your pH test strips, it's good just to make sure, just to check, make sure that there's no moisture in the container um, that can affect your results. Um, again, while you're out in the field, you're gonna wanna make sure that you record all of the information on the field data sheet and fill that out completely. Um, this is gonna include observational data like the weather, um, the surface conditions and things like that. So you're first gonna put uh, the project name, your site information, the monitors that are out there with you, the monitoring date, and then the time when you get to the site. Um, then you're gonna fill out the observational data. So water surface, is it calm, ripple, waves, white caps, your stream flow rate, your weather type, um, tidal stage, and then a description of the water color. Um, you can also indicate any other observations like an oil slick or submerged aquatic vegetation, dead fish, erosion, things like that. Um, you're also going to include any rainfall um, that may have occurred within the last 48 hours of sampling. There's also a comments field here that you can write in any additional comments about your site. Um, all right, so then one other important note is that after you take your lab samples, you need to make sure that they go on ice in your cooler right away, and they need to get to the lab within five hours of sampling. So if you're sampling multiple sites, this time frame begins when you sample your first site. So the most important thing is to stay safe and have fun while you're out there. All right, so now we're gonna get into the actual sampling. So again, if you're sampling off of a dock, you wanna go as far out on the dock as possible um, to get as far into the middle of the waterway as possible. You wanna to try to avoid sampling around any boats or anything else that might be able to contaminate um, your sample. And you always want to collect the sample, taking the sample away from you, your body, your hands, anything, again, that might contaminate the sample. If you're sampling on the shoreline, again, you wanna sample upstream of where you are standing or um, wading into the waterway, um, again, to reduce any of the sediment being kicked up and contaminating the sample. 
So we're gonna show you how to collect the sample within this bucket instead of actually out in the field. You're gonna do your lab uh, bottle samples first. So you're gonna take, you're gonna put on your sampling gloves and you're gonna take your bacteria sample first. So again, this is a sterile bottle that has a seal on the top of the bottle. You're gonna remove that seal. Make sure that you don't litter and you keep the plastic um, in your pocket or put it in your cooler or something like that. Um, we're not gonna rinse this bottle, remember. Again, it's sterile. So we wanna try to just open the cap and take the sample in one motion and then put the cap right back on. You'll see on the bottle there's this line about 100 mils. Um, you want to try to get your sample to about that line, um, give or take a little bit. Um, so when you open the sample bottle, um, you don't want to touch the inside of the bottle or the top of the lid. So you want to just remove the, the cap, hold it separate, and then you're just going to do a U motion down and up. And I put a little bit too much in there. Um, to get your sample and then immediately close the lid. So the important thing here is that you're going down and up away from your hand in order to reduce the contamination. You're gonna then take that sample and put it right into your cooler and you'll take your turbidity sample. This one, again, we're gonna rinse this container three times before we actually take our sample. And it's important that when you're rinsing, you pour out the contents either outside of your container or downstream or on shore away from where you're taking your sample. You don't want to pour your rinses um, right down to where you're sampling. You'll do that three times and then you will dip the container into the water and fill it up completely cap it and you will put that again in your cooler for safekeeping. At this point you can put the time that you took your samples on each of the bottles and fill out your chain of custody sheet. This is where it's helpful to have more than one person out in the field so somebody else could record the time that those samples were taken um, right, after the third, right after they're taken. All right, after you have your lab samples taken, you're gonna do your temperature and pH. And first you're gonna take air temperature using your thermometer. Um, it's important to always take air temperature before you take water temperature because the condensation and the, the water on the thermometer can actually change the temperature a little bit. Um, so you wanna try to take the temperature before it gets wet. And to do that, you're gonna to wanna to find a shady spot. You don't wanna take the air temperature in the sun. Um, you want it to be in the shade. And if you don't have a shady spot at your site, you can always just create some shade with your body. You also wanna hold the thermometer away from anything else. So out in front of you, you don't wanna lay it on a table or the park bench or the grass or something like that. Um, you wanna make sure that it's not touching anything while it equilibrates. So you'll just sit here and wait for the blue line on the thermometer to stop moving. Usually we count to 10 or 20 or something like that. And if it hasn't moved, um, then you can record that air temperature. Um, and this is to the nearest half a degree. Um, so once you record your air temperature on your field data sheet, you can then take your water temperature. So you'll take your thermometer and you'll just dip it into the water. And again, we wanna to try to go for a shadier spot. Um, again, try to you can always try to create shade with your body if you don't have it. Um, and again, you'll just wait for the thermometer to equilibrate. You wanna make sure, especially with these um, glass thermometers, that you take the reading 
of t the temperature while the thermometer is still in the water. Um, you don't want to take it out and then try to read it because it will start changing as soon as you remove the, temp the thermometer from the water. So I'm just going to give this another second and then we will record that water temperature on our field data sheet. You can put your thermometer aside for now and then you will take your pH test strip. So ideally, I don't have the container for these right now, but ideally you'll have your little container of test strips. You'll um, undo the lid and you'll take out one test strip at a time and replace the lid right away so you don't contaminate the other test strips. And then all you're gonna do is hold the test strip in the water. You're gonna dip it right into the sample water and you're gonna hold it there for about two minutes or so until the end of the test strip will have a little square on it and that will change color. Um, once that happens, then you'll be able to compare that color to the color on the tube of test strips and determine a pH. So you'll record that pH value on your field data sheet. Um, again, make sure that you don't litter. The, once these test strips are used, they're done, and you'll just throw that away with the um, container, the um, saran wrap that was around the bacteria container. All right, so once you're done taking your field sample, it's always good to double check that your lab sample lids are securely tightened they are labeled correctly so again double check the labels make sure that it is the accurate site that you just collected the data from make sure that they are in your cooler with ice and ready to go um, you can take your gloves off so that you don't contaminate anything else again don't litter make sure these get disposed of in the proper place and you can take all of your samples uh, put it back into your kit and take it to the Potomac Riverkeeper lab to drop off the lab samples and the other supplies.